Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Little Disrupt Tiles, and we've been doing a few of those whiteboard business videos. I know you guys all love those, and we've got a few more planned we're going to get to, but we like to mix up a little bit. We wanted to do one of our animal updates to share with you one of my favorite animals that we have. And let's just go ahead and pull it out. But before, well, before we show you this, let's talk a little bit about what's in here. One, there's, there's no lid. See that? So that should tell you maybe a few things. Um, number two, this is an animal that I would tell you not everybody should probably go get. Uh, think really long and hard before you get one of these. They are very, very rewarding. They are a ton of fun. We do hope to breed and produce these. Uh, we were this close last season. This close. We missed it by this much. We actually had our display light fail and that sucked real bad. So we did not see the eggs that were laid because it kind of buried them and then they tore the eggs up. We found them doing cleaning. So super sad about that. We're hoping again to possibly get some babies. Uh, if we do get babies, they're usually born uh, really late October all through November. That's when they'll usually have the eggs laid. So it's prime time right now to fatten them up and feed them up and all of that, which is when we found the eggs last time was in November. Um, so, uh, Man, I guess I should just stop building suspense, right? Uh, oh, man, you guys ready? I've been working on my magician's trick. Actually, I'm not going to do a hard pull on this because I don't want to knock that off. So that is the animal we're working with. So these are going to be a venomous animal. No, they're not going to kill you. I'll get it out of there for you, Kurt, so you don't have to film in the nasty tub. So what are we looking at here before I show you some of the way we're going to handle this animal? Yes, we do have a tool to move it around or keep it up there if we need to. This is a Gila monster. So uh, they're awesome. The color is awesome. This is our big male. Our female is a little bit thinner build because she'd have eggs. We are fattening her up good. She actually gets way more food than he gets. We tend to feed these guys in bunches and lay off and feed in bunches and lay off and feed in bunches and lay off. When you feed them, they will eat a lot. Uh, so you do need to get a little bit of a break in between that. So they are one of two, I like to say only two truly venomous lizards in the United or in the world. As somebody's going to be like, well, monitor lizards, yada, yada, yada. I, I get it. Okay, I know there are some protein venom chains in the monitor saliva, but these are different. Uh, these are different because what they have that is lacking in monitors is a delivery system. You know, monitors and Komodos and things like that that do have a, a, a venom protein chain in there and some studies on that. They have a serrated tooth, they're going to cut, it's going to soak in there, but they don't really, they're not truly a, able to deliver a venomous bite. These are. Now, the venom delivery system is very, very uh, rudimentary. So it's, their, their venom acts on a toxicity scale is fairly high. Uh, let me get this guy out. And the way we're going to handle this, before I get more into the venom, is we're going to do it by hand. So uh, the trick is, you don't want to get bit by this. If I get bit by this, man, let me tell you, I'm not going to die. Okay, I'm not going to lose my finger. That There's no documented cases of anything like that happening. But it's going to hurt. And it's going to hurt really, really bad. And it's not going to let go. And it's going to pump that in there. And my life is going to suck for probably a little while. Um, they say the pain is worse in childbirth or, or worse in else. So you come in really quick and you just grab right behind. Not giving that thing a chance to turn its head around on you. And then you want to pick it up give it some good support since it's a pretty good size. If you can get two hands on it, that's best. We'll move that out the way. We're going to set it there on the table for you. Let you take a look at it. Don't back up off the table, bud. You're fine. He'll calm down, and eventually he'll calm down. He'll let us pet him a little bit, hopefully. Depends on his mood. Oh, you're okay. Let's stop that. Oh, come on. They are not real bright. They will literally fall off a table if you let them. So you got to kind of watch that with him. Um, but they have a venom delivery system. They have this grooved tooth. So the venom glands are located here in the bottom of the jaw, where those jowls are really big, right? And when they bite, they're going to compress those muscles and it's going to go up this capillary groove in that tooth through that force and, and go into the wound deeper than if it was just kind of chewed in. They kind of chew it into that capillary action and actually do deliver a venomous bite. Don't you? Now their venom is not for catching prey. That's the other difference between them and a lot of your venomous snakes. Almost all of your venomous snakes I can think of on the planet use their venom for two things. One, catching food they eat and two, a defensive measure. Their venom is 100% purely defensive. It is not used for eating their prey. They just overpower small prey and they just chunk it down. Um, it's pretty amazing to see how they do that. Uh, the other cool thing about these is, one, 
kind of like I love the rattlesnakes because they're very North American. They're a very American thing. Gila monsters fit that category too. They're they've I mean they're an American animal. They do I think bleed over a little bit in New Mexico. They're cousins, which are bigger than them, which is the Mexican beaded lizard, and it's way bigger than these. They get like ca you know they get huge. Um, is the other truly venomous lizard in the world. They um, you know they're not. Oops, sorry about attached with that my bad they're not in the united states but these were things of myth and legend and everything else because they're they're really reclusive you don't see them very often in the wild uh so they're you know kind of like rattlesnakes have that myth and lore that's truly american so do gila monsters which makes them awesome you'll find them uh in a few different locations as far up as utah and as far down as i want to say like the arizona new mexico area so um uh, you got a little fly crawl on you. Bye, fly. Another cool thing with them. So, if you see how bumpy this head is here, can I scratch your head? Oh, maybe, maybe. Huh? Are we going to be good? <laughs> Woo! Maybe not. Come on. You'll be fine. Chill out, buddy. No, we can't go that way. Oh, come on. Calm down. Don't you fall off of the table now. I can't do that. You're going to try. So I can't let you get off the table. I know, I know. Come here. Uh, he doesn't really put up much of a fight on that. But those bumps in their head, if you could get a chance to never feel them, uh, I'm just trying to give you a back to back into it so you'll quit running backwards. Uh, they are bone. So those bumps are in the skull. So they're they're literally, if you were to peel the skin off this animal, and please don't do that while it's alive, you would find that that skull has bumps on it that match that skin. So those bumps are not just skin deep, it's actual bone. And I don't know, I find that really, really cool. I just love these guys. So I wanted to share something a little different. We show a lot of snakes on channel. Uh, we don't show many lizards on channel. As a matter of fact, in our possession, we have exactly three animals that live here with legs. Uh, those three are two Gila monsters. Well, I guess four. Two Gila monsters. Uh, Sir Chompsalot, the dwarf caiman, and Caleb. So that would be the only four things with legs here. So out of several hundred living, breathing things, that's what? Four, eight, twelve, fourteen legs in the house. Uh, not a whole lot, right? But uh, that's really all I got to say about them. Again, we hope to produce with these guys. It would just be a... And this is not going to be something like... Okay, for me, and I know we did that whole video talking about being a boutique and being like a bit, all those things. And we are definitely in the business category. We run our ball pythons like a business category. But I run my venomous stuff and my little side projects pretty boutique-like. You know, this is not something that I think we're going to make big money on or I'm going to produce in mass. I want to produce a couple because I just want to see the process. I want to do it. I want to say I've done it. I want to watch those babies hatch and grow up, you know. And then if, if I enjoy it, you know, do it every year for maybe a, maybe at most two females in a group. Uh, I don't really want to, like, be the guy producing 35, 40 helas a year. I like to be the guy producing four or five helas a year. Um, same with our rattlesnakes. You know, we're not going to ever breed tons and tons and tons of rattlesnakes. Curtain boas probably won't ever breed tons and tons and tons of boas, maybe. Well... Four females makes a ton of boas. So I guess it depends on how you look at that. We probably won't have 40 female boas we're breeding, but we'll probably make a ton of boas at some point. So anyway, that's kind of all I got on this. Um, Caleb, any other questions that you want to add about the great Gila monster? Not really. I need to give you a... Whoa! I need to give you a scrubbing. You got in the water and you got some green crap on there. Rawr. Oh, you like a scratch? Is that a good scratch? Is that a good scratch? Yeah, that's a good scratch. Rawr. Give me a chance to look underneath your head. Okay, don't fall off the table. All right, Curtin, you want to add about the Gila monster? Or any um, questions? So what do they eat? Vegetables? or? Yeah, they are fully vegetarian. No, not really. Uh, so we tend to feed these guys uh, a lot of pinky rats. Uh, you know, you want something that they can kind of swallow whole. They're going to chew it down and suck that thing down. But you could feed them other things, certain small birds I think they'd probably be okay with. Uh, I do think you can feed them certain eggs if you chose to or egg parts. Um, in, in the wild, what they tend to do is raid a lot of like nests <laughs> with babies and things like that. They're, they don't really eat a lot of adult animals unless they're very small adult animals that I can think of. Can you think of any other diet that I'm missing on that? In the wild, I'm sure they also eat uh, lizards that they can get, really anything they can get their mouth on. Rodents. Yeah. 
uh, I'm pretty sure I've read some studies where they occasionally will eat roadkill and carrion and things like that. Woo! <laughs> um, but no, I mean that's about how typical. It's just a carnivorous diet. So as a uh, a lizard, they're not very fast. These things are not going to win a, a land race contest. <laughs> uh, that's also part of what makes their diet. They're not going to hunt and chase things down. You know, uh, so that's, they, yeah, a lot of slow moving stuff. Now you can see a lot of their movement. Don't you fall off that table. Side to side, they're pretty quick. Okay, running a race, they're not. Uh, any other questions, Kurt? No. All right, guys, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. We're going to put this guy back in his cage here in a few minutes after we talk about him on Patreon a little bit.